From the Whiskey Tangent Studios in Marlton, New Jersey, this is Whiskey Tangent News. Hey everybody, this is Ed from the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, here with an episode of Whiskey News. Woo! And joining me, as always, is Scott. Hey, everybody! And for the first time on our news episode, we have a guest. <laughs> Gabe, you can talk. Hi. <laughs> Ah, you bitch! I told Gabe he wasn't allowed to talk to in the intro, <laughs> and he took me serious and didn't announce it. Oh, is that what happened? Okay. I'm, I'm going to be doing an investigative report if it's about 20 minutes long, <laughs> in depth. It starts at 11.30. You're not even four inches long. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, this and is, now back to I don't have to be good anymore. This is the news. I can do whatever I want on the news. Wow. All right. So today, we're going to have industry news, like we often do, financial Legal news, mm. science and technology, and entertainment. Then we'll talk about what new whiskeys you can buy this month. We're going to talk about a wonderful Boss Hog tasting Oof. that we were able to attend. Amazing. It wasn't cheap. No. But, spoiler alert, mm. it became it, worth it for us. It did. And then we talk about what's coming up on the podcast in the next month. All right. So it is January 2023, and here's all the news that's fit to drink. In industry news, from Fred Minnick, Buffalo Trace fills their 8 millionth barrel. Wow. As of late last month, the Buffalo Trace distillery has filled more than 8 million barrels since Prohibition ended. But unlike all the previous million barrel milestones that took an average of 12 years to achieve, the 8 millionth barrel comes just 4 years after the 7 millionth barrel was filled in April of 2018, mostly due to the 1.2 billion expansion efforts at the distillery over the last several years, which we reported on back in September. On hand to mark the occasion was Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, Kentucky Senate Majority Floor Leader Damon Thayer, and Buffalo Trace Distillery officials, including third-generation team member Freddie Johnson, whose family has been involved in every millionth barrel since 1942. Said Master Distiller Harlan Wheatley, we've doubled our fermenter added more grain cookers and more barrel warehouses all in an effort to make more bourbon we've filled a record number of barrels every year and now that we have our new still house starting up we'll be able to double the output of our whiskey production so we're going to be reaching nine million barrels before you know it well i have to tell you my message to you guys is at buffalo trace why can i not find blantons <laughs> why can i not find any of the weller under 400 dollars? why can i not have any eagle rare and why can I only find your averagely delicious Buffalo Trace regular four-year crap mm. everywhere I go? Mm. It's so annoying. Like, if you guys are producing such massive amounts of whiskey, can you send some of it to New Jersey? Well, I will say that you can find a Don't lot. Defend him. <laughs> you can find a lot of Sazerac rye, which just won the Ocho on the Whiskey Tangent Woo. tasting competition. Yes, it did. It got the Ocho during the Whiskey Mentry. Uh, but seriously, we have been seeing it for much cheaper and in more quantities That's than fair. we've ever seen it before. I see more Sazerac. Yeah. I just want Eagle Rare. Sure. I know that you just hit another million in four years. I need you to hit it in 10 years with a 10 year Eagle Rare. <laughs> I'll even take eight year Eagle Rare. Just give me that. Yeah. Okay. So the next story from Industry News, we have. From Whiskey Advocate, the American single malt pioneer Steve McCarthy has died. Oh, my God. Yeah. Steve McCarthy, creator of the American single malt category and one of craft distilling's earliest pioneers, passed away on January 2nd, 2023, just five days shy of his 80th birthday. Oh, wow. McCarthy founded Oregon-based Clear Creek Distillery in 1985 at a time when craft distilling in America was nearly barren terrain. McCarthy single malt remains one of the stars of the U.S. whiskey scene today. Absolutely. However, McCarthy's initial passion wasn't actually whiskey. After tasting a pear-based brandy on a trip through France in the early 1980s, he came back to Oregon determined to become a distiller. His plan was to utilize his family's apple and pear orchards to create his own brandy, a mission he accomplished successfully. But then after a trip to Ireland and Scotland several years later, he decided to try his hand at making whiskey, which of course he also accomplished successfully. He seems easily influenced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although McCarthy had sold his distillery to Hood River Distillers in 2014, he had stayed on in an advisory role, and it's where his single malt continues to be made today. His 1970 trip to Thailand, where he became infatuated with skinny prostitution. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how influenced he was. He's also one of the first people to, to fall in love with techno music. Right. He had a face tattoo, and he chipped his tooth, and he had a tiger. And right. He had a grill. Mike Tyson was there. Bradley he, Cooper. He had a face tattoo. You know what I'm doing. Sad, though. 
Like, uh, that's uh, an icon in the industry. I mean, I think we've ruined that. I will say this. There is no smoky single malt in America that can touch McCarthy still. Mm-hmm. It's something that's a unique American creation. He was the first. And I give him a lot of credit for what he did. We have fun on here. And I think if he was here with us right now, I mean, he'd be having a blast. Agreed. All right. So from industry news, from progressivefarmer.com. I'm a progressive farmer. Are you? Yeah, I let my, I, yeah, I let my pigs vote Democrat. <laughs> And then I butcher them and we eat them. Oh, shit. Those Democrat pigs are delicious. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So from progressivefarmer.com, Nebraska distiller will turn your corn into whiskey. The farm to glass whiskey production ethos that many small craft distilleries espouse is great and all. But how about your farm to your glass? Well, that's the idea driving the crew at Flyover Whiskey, a farm distiller in West Point, Nebraska. Mail them 15 to 20 pounds of corn, and for $350, they'll send you back six bottles of whiskey made from what you sent them. Now, the goal isn't exactly to make an elite whiskey that might win a big tasting competition. After all, their process of producing a batch of whiskey only takes eight weeks, two weeks for the fermentation, then another six weeks of aging. So the magic doesn't come in producing a truly divine spirit, but rather in creating a truly individualized one, with each bottle also getting a custom-designed label. As master distiller Devin Burcham said, if you're buying a bottle of whiskey in a store, you're not necessarily thinking about where it was made and with what ingredients. But with every bottle that we make, someone's holding it and thinking about what it is and where it came from. It's not just a bottle of liquor sitting on a shelf. It's personal. Bullshit. (laughs) How much flavor are you getting out of an eight-week aging process? Right. I I totally agree. For $350, maybe they should age it for a year. Why not? Yeah. Why not hold on to it for a little bit? Yeah, Yeah, sure. I agree. It's a novelty thing, but. I just think you'd be getting some rot. Get clear. <laughs> you're pretty much you're, clear. It's you're clear. getting white dog, basically, yeah, aren't right. you? Yeah, you're getting you're getting a little moonshine. Yeah, eight weeks is not very long. No, I agree with Gabe. Ed, I agree with Gabe also. <laughs> right, so it's a rare moment. <laughs> we both had agreements tonight for yeah. each other. We should hug it out. <laughs> yeah, but that's not going to happen. Get your hand off me. Stop touching me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, in legal news, yeah. Topclassactions.com reports that Sazerac has been sued over misleading fireball labels. Oh, my God. This is insane to me. What the hell? Listen to this. A new class action lawsuit alleges that the parent company of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, those vampires at Sazerac, (laughs) are misleading consumers who expect their Fireball mini bottles to contain whiskey when sometimes they don't contain any whiskey at all. Confused? Well, me too, because I was today years old when I learned that there are actually two different cinnamon-flavored beverages sold under the name Fireball. You see, in summer 2020, Sazerac began selling a malt-based product called simply Fireball Cinnamon that, because it contains no whiskey, can be sold in far more stores across the United States that are barred from selling distilled alcohol. The lawsuit filed in Illinois states that customers are being fooled into buying the malt product because its labels are nearly identical to the Fireball Cinnamon whiskey. Additionally, Sazerac is being accused of unjust enrichment, fraud, and negligent misrepresentation in violation of the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, the Illinois Consumer Fraud and Deceptive Businesses Practices Act, and several other state consumer fraud laws. Goddamn vampires. Yeah. I have to tell you, I agree with I agree with the lawsuit. Okay, so just to show you, these are the two different bottles. The only difference, this one, one says cinnamon whiskey. One word. Yeah. This one says cinnamon, and the small print beneath it is different. If you were in a store and you saw Fireball Cinnamon, you would buy it and think it was Absolutely. whiskey. Absolutely. I might have done it. I think this lawsuit has merit. I think absolutely shame on you, Sazerac. That's highly deceptive. What are they pulling? No, honestly, malt beverages tend to be served in cans or they'll be in bottles, but not the exact same bottle as whiskeys. Yep. And what's really sinister about it is that the proof of Fireball whiskey is 66, but the ABV is, of course, half that 33. So they literally made their malt product to be 33 proof. They're totally promoting confusion. Malt products normally five to ten. Oh yeah, it's still going to get you fucked up, but just half as fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they sell a, a shit ton of that stuff too. Exactly. Yeah. I hope they win their lawsuit. It's high now. I got to tell deception. you, there's been a few times I've taken a shot of Fireball and it hasn't tasted right. Now maybe I know. Oh, why. now you know why. I just thought it's because oh, I hate it more today than I normally do. I, it's just incredible to me. <laughs> All right, so two small stories in financial news. From the spirits business, 
Tequila beats whiskey. Never. Mm. By the end of 2022, the Mexican spirit tequila had surpassed American whiskey to become the second most valuable spirit category in the United States. Agave-based spirits in general contributed $1.6 billion to the spirits industry in 2022, representing 65% of the overall growth in U.S. spirits. Furthermore, this year, in 2023, tequila is set to overtake vodka to become the most valuable spirit category so wait what does whiskey get i don't know they're billions i don't know they didn't say that in our article there's not a lot of hundred dollar vodkas compared to whiskeys but there's a whole lot of vodkas <laughs> thanks greg snyder for your cool whip pinnacle <laughs> i mean yeah vodka is a high mixer drink right so that it's, probably it, it, accounts for true. some well, of the, it's the alcohol too. for people who don't drink right yeah, uh, yeah for, it takes on whatever you're drinking sure. sure yeah this is why children should start with vodka <laughs> Oh my God. Well, I'm not encouraging. I'm saying that's where they would start. Oh, that's where they should start. But yeah. you're not saying they should. Right. But if, you're saying they you're should. If you're a kid <laughs> who wants to drink illegally, vodka is where you start. I'm not saying kids should start drinking vodka. That mm. or the fireball, or uh, the non whiskey. Right. Yeah, drink the fake the fireball. Bever- yeah, the fake fireball. Right. So, kids, if you're 16, you get the fake fireball <laughs> or maybe the pinnacle Cool Whip vodka. <laughs> yeah, whipped cream vodka or whatever it is well, start there we're only kidding okay so the second financial one that i have is from agriland.com irish exports top 1 billion the value of whiskey exports from ireland soared past 1 billion dollars for the first time last year according to the latest industry figures released on january 11th oh yeah tell to kilo that <laughs> this is irish <laughs> <laughs> with more than 15 million cases, equivalent to 180 million bottles sold last year. Top of the morning, too. The number one export market for Irish whiskey is the United States, Damn followed right by the European Union, and then the UK. Then this guy named Freddy lives <laughs> down the street. He's fifth. <laughs> James and his son. James' son. <laughs> but there is a growing demand in all markets for the premium higher priced irish whiskey as well as an increased interest in the category from millennial and generation z consumer segments which one did you buy me again for my birthday you got oh. the red breast yeah i got you the uh the castor wait was it 15 year it wasn't castor though no it wasn't castor it was just a 15 year or something. yeah yeah 15 year red breast very nice red breast. oh hey javon it's javon come on in javon's here I mean, that's partially why we did last summer's Irish Fest episode. Right. Because of all the new stuff that's coming out of Ireland and Siobhan and Gabe were on that episode. Correct. Irish Fest 2022. All right. So in science and technology news. From the Whiskey Raiders, you could soon be drinking whiskey made with 200-year-old barley. Explain that, Scott. Where would one get 200-year-old barley? Well, I'll tell you, Ed. Researchers at the Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, Scotland, are working on reviving extinct heritage of barley varieties, which could be used to make whiskey. Over the next six years, the scientists plan to test at least eight varieties to find out whether old species of barley can create distinctive new whiskeys, while also displaying resilience to the climate change-related stresses that are expected in the coming decades. Among the barley varieties they'll be testing are a 200-year-old Chevalier species said to have been one of the most popular barleys in Britain. In addition, they'll be studying a 180-year-old strain called Hannah that was used to make the first blonde Pilsner lager ever and the Golden Promise barley that the Macallan grew and distilled in the 1960s. Said Mark Watson, head of spirit operations at Holy Rood Distillery, we think there are clear sensory differences with using heritage barleys, but we wanted to back it up with science and hopefully bring back flavors and aromas that haven't been present in whiskey for decades, if not centuries. Science! Science! It's not particularly old grain. It's old strains of grain. Barley. Barley. Exactly. That they had grown in the past. Hey, do, do you have anything to say about the barley, the 200-year-old barley? I mean, it's left me kind of speechless. I'm not going to lie. I do like a nice beef barley soup, but I can get it, though. <laughs> I don't like, know, chunky, I don't, chunky beef barley soup. That's, that's pretty probably. good. I had some this week. It's delicious. I, I heard it eats like a meal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I hear the, Scott does, but go ahead. Oh my god, <laughs> Scott's more than a mouthful. I'm quite a meal. <laughs> that's what I hear. I'm quite a meal. All right, so in entertainment news, the last story that we have before we get the new whiskeys this month. From the Rob Report, Matthew McConaughey's Wild Turkey contract is over. Oh, my God. Thank God. 
think. <laughs> well, no, I well, do respect well. that he made his own whiskey and all. I can't believe the contract's <laughs> over. Like, how do you just walk away from, like, are you invested? Are you a whiskey guy? Well, here you go. So everything comes to an end, whether it's The Walking Dead, human existence, <laughs> Or a celebrity booze brand collaboration. Yes, the partnership between Matthew McConaughey and Wild Turkey ended just a few weeks ago on December 31st, 2022. And although his signature whiskey, Long Branch Bourbon, will continue, his actual signature on the bottle will not. In a statement released by Wild Turkey, they said, At the end of 2022, our existing contract with Matthew will expire and our teams will amicably part ways while our formal partnerships for wild turkey and long branch will end matthew will always be family thanks to matthew's creative vision along with eddie russell's mastery of whiskey we set the stage for long branch to continue to be an important part of the portfolio however the long branch ranch which opened just in november to offer customers an immersive bourbon infused experience outside of austin texas is still open for business and accepting reservations and although it's likely that there won't be a copy of mcconaughey's book in every room going forward there will be still plenty of long branch bourbon on hand so i think both mcconaughey and wild turkey will be all right all right all right <laughs> <laughs> i mean nice. it's strange like what was the problem it's my question if you're keeping his whiskey and you're keeping the little adventure park <laughs> why 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 get rid of the spokesperson that ties it all together I, yeah i it's don't like, know like a little jurassic park of whiskey going on maybe right maybe he didn't want to do it anymore yeah maybe we don't really know i mean it, Mm, maybe Possibly. is he not getting paid anymore for each bottle i guess not. no probably not no the contract is done oh all right so the new whiskeys that you can buy this month that's what we do next the first one we have is the bookers 202204 the pinkies batch this is their last release from 2022 named for fred no's grandfather frederick booker no, who wasn't even in the whiskey business, like his famous son, Fred Booker No the second. Are you confused? Because I was confused. So Fred Booker No was the original Booker No, but his son, Booker No, was the whiskey guy that we all know as Booker No. Right. Uh, uh, everyone all caught up? It's perfectly clear. Uh, okay. So uh, it's a blend of barrels from four rickhouses. It's seven and a half years age. It's 122.4 proof. Brown spice vanilla on the nose. Vanilla custard, red apple, espresso, and char on the palate. Hot and dry with licorice and menthol on the finish. Its MSRP is 90. Hmm. I saw it in the liquor store. What, what are brown spices, by the way? I don't know what brown spices are. Uh, that that kind of jumped bad at me. <laughs> Yeah, that was their tasting note, buying brown spice. All right. Yeah. Okay. Is it racist? I try to get a couple of bookers a year, let's be honest. I think we went through two last year, and they were both good. It's yeah. true. I Actually, Ed, I almost bought this for your birthday. Okay, so uh, the second one is the Dingle Single Malt. <laughs> This is a brand new core expression after having released yearly small batches. It's got some berry flavor to it, I think. <laughs> Dingle berry flavor. <laughs> <laughs> small batch versions one of which we tasted on last summer's Irish Fest episode number 52 we tasted the Dingle single malt but it was one of the small batches this is a core expression that they're now released in America it's six to seven years yes. aged finished in bourbon barrels and Pedro Jimenez sherry cask Pedro Jimenez si. from Jerez de la Frontera Spain 92.6 proof uh, I wasn't able to find tasting notes on this but the MSRP is $100 damn it seems it's kind of... For that proof? Yeah. It seems, wow. seems kind of a lot. Yeah. Okay. The Dread River Master Series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, Dread River oh, Master oh. Series. Sounds like something like the devil would put out. Oh, Dread River. <laughs> First Master Series release since Bullet's former master distiller, Ebony Major, joined Alabama's Dread River Distillery. Only 1,500 bottles were made. It's aged four to six years. It's sourced. It's 100 proof. Cherry, apples, oak, and light vanilla with a smooth, warmy, spicy finish. But the MS. MSRP is 115. Yeah, not that you're going to see one of those 150 bottles or uh, 1,500 yeah. bottles. Yeah. I mean, if you only have 1,500 bottles, they're all going to sell anyway. You can charge whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big controversy with her and the bullet. So yeah. if you want to read about that, you can. The next one is Kentucky Owl Batch number 12. It's a blend of seven to 14 year bourbons with two different four year bourbons. It's 115.8 proof, green spice. On the nose, deep cherry, vanilla, caramel, yeah. and a touch of oak on the palate, and hot and spicy on the finish. 
Uh, it's MSRP is four hundred dollars. <laughs> Try again. Right. Why? That's that's a why. It's Kentucky Al, bro. They it, charge ridiculous prices I know. for their um, shit. But what exactly is Green Spice? I don't know what Green Spice is. Is it the same spice that Brown Spice is, but just two weeks earlier? <laughs> Maybe. What the fuck? It wasn't roasted. Okay. Like green, green coffee beans. Green, green spice. Isn't that that song they always play in the Middle Ages? That's green sleeves. Oh. Okay, so the next whiskey, <laughs> Old Elk Infinity Blend, batch number two. Old Elk loves himself some Old Elk. Man, their prices. Are, first of all, if you're going to call yourself some redneck ass shit like Old Elk, you can't be like <laughs> $9,805 a bottle, all right? $140 like Old Elk. Like your Old Elk. Old Elk should be the bottom shelf. Old Crow. Right, wild old turkey elk. and old elk, old wolf. So y'all fucking brought some old elk to the fucking old, party, old badger. Seriously, you know, like one hundred and forty dollars. I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, I've had some old wombat. Have you ever had that? Seriously, old elk should be that shit. The bottom of the shelf with a dust on. Like, what's that? Twenty five dollars. Oh, wombat's fucking good. Give me that sixteen dollar old elk and bring it on over. Okay, so following last year's batch one, which created the foundational blend of a high malt six year bourbon and a well aged Kentucky straight bourbon, this year's blend contains eighteen percent of their batch one infinity blend as you do with I infinity do. blends yes, right. 15% of their seven year bourbon that they sell I should do 52% of their seven year wheat whiskey right. 9% of sourced 13 year Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey and okay. 6% of sourced 12 year Kentucky straight bourbon wow, that's whiskey lot on. 114.1 proof Candied lemon, chocolate, orange, peach, cinnamon on the nose, big, deep, caramel, cherry, Ooh. cranberry on the palate, and creme brulee and herbal oak on the finish. Big, deep caramels. Okay, so the next one is Old Forster 117 Series, extra, extra old, two extras. <laughs> oh, my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> You are the oldest in the room. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. extra, extra old. This is Old Forester's 1910 whiskey, aged in yeah. new charred oak barrel for two years. Nice. So it's 93 proof, mm -hmm. tar, tree bark, leather, and peppery gunpowder on the nose. Old wood. <laughs> is that also you, Ed? Yes, yeah, I'm afraid that's <laughs> also my name. Baking spice, cola, and a faint note of cooked bacon. Also my uh, mm. also me. On the palate, cloves, lingering cola, rhubarb, and a bright strawberry surprise on the finish. <laughs> That's all over the place. Now, the MSRP is only 60 Oh, well, shoot. I would buy that. I would, I would buy the shit that. out of that. Yeah, I would try that. That's really nice. So the next one after that is Rabbit Hole Race King Founders Collection. Mm. We need to do a, an episode on Rabbit Hole. Do we? No? You okay. don't think so? No, all right. We can't. <laughs> okay, so we I won't. Oh, I thanks, mean, Ed. I mean, well, I mean, I had a weird experience with one, and you said you didn't like the one you had, right? No, uh, we actually, well, there was one that we didn't really like so much, but then Marty had one that we really did like. Okay, well, maybe we do have to do one on okay. Rabbit Hole. I mean, they have a lot of expressions. Well, now. we'll drag Marty along with that. Oh, that'll okay. be awesome. Yeah, okay. okay, so this is apparently a re-release of the original Race King, a five-grain bourbon, 70% corn, 13% rye, 10% malted barley, 4% chocolate malt wheat from Germany, and 3% chocolate malted barley from the UK. That's it's nice. That sounds good. Yeah, 109.8 proof, cocoa, brown sugar, and toasted bread on the nose, cinnamon, spice, black cherry, and tobacco on the palate, and finishing with a wood, leather, and chocolate, <laughs> MSRP... Three ninety five. Oh, wow. so, much, uh, so well, much for that. Well, so much. Yeah. People can tell us about that. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Boom. Wow. wow. All right. So the last whiskey that we have that you can drink this month, Writer's Tears Redhead. Ooh. I don't know why they didn't just say ginger. <laughs> this Oloroso Sherry matured single malt is now available in the U.S. for the first time. It's 92 proof, butterscotch, pralines, fruit, lemon, copper on the nose, malt, fruit, cinnamon, leather, citrus peel on the palate, long, sweet malt finish of sherry, toffee, and mint. MSRP is 70. I don't think that's terrible for a 92 proof Irish whiskey. I would probably give that a try. Yeah, I think so. Gabe, you're a big Irish whiskey fan. Uh, not, we, not really. We had a good experience. Okay, so... <laughs> we had a good experience with the Writer's Tears when we had on our episode. We did. There's some good Irishes out there. Um, what, I just bought the... Uh, what was the one? Um, no one really cares. So anyways, Lamavati. <laughs> you can edit that out. Fuck you, Ed. Go on. Wow. On. No. Uh, yeah, Lamavati. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a higher proof uh, Yeah, it was pretty Irish. good. Yeah. Once you get the goddamn cap off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. fuck. That thing was so yeah. hard to get off. It had the glass top. That yeah. Was, yeah. It was the hardest, really. Right. You thought you were going to break the goddamn top off. It would off. be easier to get a glass eye in and out than it was to get that glass top in and out of that fucking bottle. It was a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> it was a pain. Every time you took it off, it was like. <laughs> it, was, it was like a couple dogs in heat. You had to like, fucking hose them down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Shit. Are you done yet, Rover? Oh, Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Get okay. Off, get off that bitch. <laughs> so that was all the whiskeys you could drink this month. The next topic that we're going to yes. talk about that we teased last month was right. the Boss Hog tasting right. that we went to. So the Boss Hog tasting turned out to be better than we even expected. Oh my God, it I was mean, amazing. It cost uh, you know, a couple of dollars. We're not going to lie. It, it wasn't free. There's been many expressions over the years. We weren't able to drink the first expression, Scott. We weren't able to drink the second expression, nor no. the third. But nor however, third. Yes. I will tell you that we were able to drink the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yes, we were. Boss Hog expressions. That's what was available at the tasting. And some of the best food I've ever had at a tasting, from God, f- Blue Point oysters to duck on a crostini with cheddar cheese with a, like flake duck, and it was like lobster dumpling soup or something. And oh my we, god, that was amazing! Then we had a bronzino mm. fish, and then we had delicious filet medallions. Every course of food was amazing, plus the six whiskeys, and we had a great time. And then, <laughs> unbelievably. Scott won a free bottle of Boss Hog number nine, the newest one. Yeah, so there was a drawing that we didn't even know what was going on. Ed and I were talking to the guys that we were sitting with, and then all of a sudden, everybody started calling my name. Scott, Scott, hey, Scott won a whiskey. Yeah. Like, Wait, it's what like 25 happened? 25 people there, and Scott wins the bottle. So I stood up. Which means we won the bottle. <laughs> and then the honors came over, and he's like, you won. And I was like, what did I win? I was like, you want a bottle of whiskey? And I was like, oh, I can pick any whiskey? He's like, yeah. He's like, you don't have to pick a whistle pig. But we had just tasted probably the best whistle pig, the Boss Hog 9 siren song, one of the best whiskeys that I ever tasted. And I said, I will take the Boss Hog 9. And that's the one that we got. Right. And it's about a $700 bottle. So it's the most expensive bottle that we've ever owned. It's funny. I don't, I don't see the bottle sitting in your apartment. No. And we weren't <laughs> allowed to do that. So it's only in the locker at the lounge. Right. How convenient. We actually yeah. broke it open on Thursday and had our first ounce pour out of it, Scott and I and Anders. Where were our invites? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll invite you guys. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. The crickets will go to first taste before we do. So, Bitches. Uh, well, they've already had it for sure. Hey, guys. Thanks for the uh, boss hog, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so the age of this was 13 years its proof is between 102 and 107 i don't remember exactly what ours was yeah. the thing about it it's finished in greek fig nectar barrels and greek tintura liqueur barrels right so Ooh. the fig yeah gets sweetness yeah and wow. the tintura is like a cinnamon liqueur from greece and it is just freaking amazing yeah, it's delicious whiskey i don't know if it's worth 700 dollars, but mm. it, it's definitely good if you just can get a bottle given to you oh for, yeah for I, w- chance. I wouldn't have bought it at the store that's wow. for sure if you're lucky enough to have someone hand you a bottle of it like we did <laughs> yeah it's pretty amazing but listen we spent a lot of whiskey we we actually deserve to have that come back our way and it's karma of course scott won and not me but um uh, right so my only rule is because ed goes in the lounge more than i do don't drink any of it without me that's the only <laughs> No, don't look at Siobhan and make a face. I saw that. The, my well, addendum is don't drink it without a second person from the whiskey. No, t- don't drink there. it without me because I want it. You oh, bitch. Oh, my God. They pulled your ticket, so now you're the field marshal. Well, how would you feel if you pulled it and I drank it without you? Time out, time out. I'd be happy, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be happy if anybody pulled it recently, to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> And Lord no. knows I pull it myself quite I, often. I have one question. Okay. Does Anders have the key to your uh, yeah, locker? He does. Okay. We're not allowed to go That's in. That's all I need to it. know. So it was an amazing tasting. I mean, Scott, what was our top three? Can we do that? I don't know. Do you remember what your top three was? I mean, I, I thought remember, you took notes. I took notes, but I didn't take what our top was. Uh, I mean, I like. I didn't take her top off. <laughs> I think I think <laughs> I think I liked mine. I think was six nine five. Okay, mine was definitely nine. Um, six is the uh, samurai scientist, which yeah. I think we both liked. Yeah, and then five is Spirit of Mauve, which was the first one we ever tasted. But it might have been nine eight six for me. Okay, but I don't really remember. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I mean I have all the tasting notes. It was an amazing wrong. experience. I mean, <laughs> one to- of the tasting notes I had is it smelled like my childhood <laughs> friend's alcoholic father's house. <laughs> Wow. So oh, that's specific, huh? So, I mean, I don't think you guys understand when you're dealing with anywhere from five to $700 bottles. I mean, the four and the five are, if you get them online, they're $1,500, $2,000 bottles now. So to be able to taste them in a row is unheard of. 
So we tasted the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, and the nine right in a row. Yeah. It was spectacular. Very special event. Every single one was delicious and very different from each other. Yeah. I mean, they're based in rye, but the way they finish them, they all come up tasting very different. Yeah. Now we have a bottle of Boss Hog. My, I know. I told Scott that I, I want the last shots to celebrate the new year next year. <laughs> next year. And we will invite yeah. Siobhan and Gabe. Oh, Gabe and that. Siobhan will both try for oh. sure. Yay, because we're sitting here. How convenient. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Just because you're sitting here. Right. And yeah. then we'll cut, cut this out. Yeah. So, well, this stop. will cut. Don't forget. Don't forget. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't forget. With people around, signal to cut is this right here. Watch this. I really like Gabe. <laughs> 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 All right. So the next thing, actually the last thing that we do yeah, on the news <laughs> is what's coming up on the podcast. So right. next week, the first week of February is episode 61 it's our first full numbered episode of the year. It's a deep distillery dive on Michigan-based Journeyman uh-huh. Distillery with hopefully a new pair of guests from the lounge that we've never had we on probably before. probably should have set up by now. Should have set up for now. Ed, text them right now. Yeah. No, I'm not allowed to text one on air, but I'll text uh, okay. the girl. In five minutes, you will text them. All right. Yes. So the week after that, which we will also be recording with those pair of guests on the 10th of February, is a quick taste of two new and interesting rye whiskeys that I picked up over the holidays ed will be proud of me and he doesn't even know what they are i don't i know he's talking about he's like a stranger to me i know it's amazing so it's like i just got here (laughs) i have no idea what he's talking about on uh, the next week after that the 17th of february the february news we'll be right back doing this nonsense and that's it so take us out ed all right so if you haven't listened to this commentary uh, go back and check it out we had tremendous guests and i think it came out very informative and, and i learned a lot so i know you will in February, we're going to have the episode on Journeyman, a great distillery, and Scott gave you a list of some great whiskeys to try. If you're bottle chasers, there's plenty of you to chase this month. And, and some bargains, actually. We'd like to thank Gabe for joining us and Siobhan for coming in late. First time we've had guests on the news. So for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, have a great month, everybody. I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I'm Gabe. And I'm Siobhan. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Be well. Later. <laughs>